Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I recently made a video about the cheap socket 1155 motherboard I got from AliExpress. Today we'll be using this board in a cheap PC build. This compact B75 board cost me £21.95 and has a handy M.2 slot meaning it supports modern and of course cableless NVMe hard drives. Drives like the 1TB Kingston NV2 which seem to be falling in price all the time. Add to this bundle two sticks of cheap DDR3 which can be found for next to no money second hand here in the UK as well as an 8 core, no 4 core, 8 thread i7-2600 in this case with a 24 month warranty and we've got ourselves a great start to a basic but capable low cost system if you get lucky a second hand CPU may even come with an included cooler Obviously prices and availability will vary depending on where you live and converting costs isn't really representative of what you could expect to spend, say in the US, but I always like to share where I buy PC parts and how well they pair together. Performance is one thing that should be similar regardless of location. Moving on to the next parts in the build and it seems like interest in older graphics cards, especially those with less than 8 gigs of memory is falling. There are some solid deals to be had if you're willing to take your chances in an online auction for example and despite what you may think of older cards, ones like the GTX 970 Gaming from MSI here can still do a decent job in esports titles and other lightweight games. The inclusion of FSR in most modern games can also breathe new life into old 900 series GPUs like this one. When using secondhand parts, I sometimes like to buy a brand new PC case to build everything inside. Now it doesn't have to be fancy, but it just makes a new to you system feel fresher, not to mention it'll be clean. Like I said, it can be basic as anything like this deep cool smarter chassis, which has all the space we need, no frills. Some cheap cases even come with a rear fan included, something I totally overlooked. These don't have to be expensive either unless you want to ensure quiet operation. It's not the best looking build all in all but it will get the job done and to power it all I'm using a 500 watt EVGA unit I found a while ago. I think this was £20 if I recall but correct me if I'm wrong and I've mentioned this in another video. I won't use it again because I don't like to reuse the same parts for budget builds too often. It feels a little bit like cheating. In total this comes in at around £175. You could definitely save money by using less RAM and perhaps a smaller or different type of hard drive, maybe a second hand one but that's entirely up to you. Buying a pre-built computer and simply adding a graphics card could also work out at a similar price or less depending on the specs, but I thought I'd put something custom together for a change instead of going down the usual money saving road. So how does this thing perform? How do the i7 2600 and GTX 970 pair in 2023 and what sort of games are they good for? Well let's find out. First up we have Apex Legends at 1080p with everything set to lowest apart from medium textures. TSAA was also enabled to smooth out some of those jagged edges. On average we saw 105 FPS followed by a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 58. CSGO next at the lowest settings averaged 159 FPS with a 1% low of a very nice 69 and a 0.1% low of 23 so there were definitely a few dips and drops here and there most noticeably when I got wiped out by other competitive players something in my case which happens a lot so you might actually get a better percentile low if you're a better player than me which isn't difficult. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5 with the maximum sliders, high settings, soft shadows, and its otropic filtering set to X8 and FXAA. We saw a nice average of 75 frames per second with solid percentile lows. Now these figures were very similar whether or not we were out in the countryside or in downtown Los Santos. So nice performance from this setup here. And of course if you want more from GTA you can turn a few things down. 
This is definitely best suited to those esports and older games though, and in Fortnite with 1080p in the medium preset with TAA enabled, we saw 85 FPS. The 1.1% low certainly left something to be desired, I'm putting this down to the older CPU, but I think all in all it was a decent experience and medium perhaps was a bit overboard considering this is a competitive online game and the low settings, perhaps even the performance mode, will work just fine and might make more sense if you're looking for as many frames as possible. Now this can also play some AAA titles if you are mindful of the settings and don't mind using FSR as well. Cyberpunk at 1080p with the lowest options now averaged 53 FPS with a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 20. The most noticeable dips were in and around those downtown areas, areas where more was happening on screen. This can be a strain on the CPU. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 next with the basic preset at 1080p resolution. FSR 2.1 really came in handy here because it boosted our frame rate from the low 60s to the low 70s and it also smoothed out that 1% figure. All in all this was a very solid experience and enough to allow us to remain somewhat competitive. I was targeting at least 60 FPS at 1080p with this build for Call of Duty and it's nice to see that we hit that. Now the Witcher 3 next gen will suffer, even in DX11 mode, when we are in and around those busy town areas like Novigrad or Oxenfurt. With the medium settings, TAAU, SSAO and SSR set to low, we were averaging 70, but that 0.1% figure does leave a little to be desired. And like I said, it's in the busier parts of town where you'll notice a bit of a drop in performance. Finally, it's Red Dead Redemption 2, which looks absolutely fantastic with the high textures, everything else set to medium, including TAA. The geometry LOD was set to max and the grass LOD was set to 2 out of 10. 53 was a nice average. This was boosted a tiny bit with FSR enabled, but it really didn't do much with this hardware, so I decided to turn it off. Of course, in this game and the others, if you want higher performance, then you can reduce the settings a little bit more, but... I didn't find it necessary for this one, and I think this was a nice place to be considering the cost of the system and the parts we are using. So what would I do different with a build like this? Well, I think if anything, I may opt for a pre-built and then add a graphics card. That would be the simpler and perhaps cheaper way of doing things. I'd also make sure that the system had a third gen i7 just in case we want to use a newer GPU. Uh, they of course support PCIe 3.0. You're not going to see much of a difference with older cards between PCIe 2.0 and PCIe 3.0 I don't think but nice to have that anyway and those third gen i7s probably aren't much more if you're putting together a custom build. I think it's definitely the best idea to buy as much storage as you can afford though and the same goes for RAM really because even in those lightweight titles extra RAM will definitely help and with games getting bigger these days extra storage is always nice to have especially after you've installed your operating system and all the updates. This I don't think is the best build for the money I've ever put together but it's nice to see you can still put together relatively cheap systems especially as prices are falling and have a decent time in those esports games so if you enjoyed this one leave a like leave a dislike if you didn't let me know what you would do with similar money in the comments below subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.